Ryan take it away. And Ryan, tell us how it's been to mount a production in the midst of COVID. What are the challenges that you've encountered? Well, thanks, Jacqueline. Let me, let me just quickly say thanks to you and to SCA. And the interesting piece that you're gonna learn over the next hour is that uh, several of the folks on this, on this Zoom are in various stages of pre-production, or various stages of, of production, rather. We were in pre-production, Simon just finished the movie, Ralph was in the midst of production. So you're gonna get a good smattering of, of what it's like handling uh, COVID in the midst of all this. But as we're gearing up for pre-production here, um, right now all of us are, are, are on the precipice of trying to figure out exactly what is happening and what that looks like. And as a matter of fact, that is, that's my topic that I'm tasked with, is what will it look like when we actually go into production? And forgive me as I, as I look to my, right on the uh my right your left on my screen here because i literally eight minutes before uh i they pressed start on this recording the a 22 page document was handed down um from the governor of california and it was signed off on uh, by the amptp and all of the unions so this is literally hot off the press it's it's one of those moments where you know a news anchor says this just in it's that's <laughs> literally that's literally okay. what's happening right now um but the good news is, Jacqueline, the entire industry at this moment is galvanized and is working hard uh, to find a solution for reopening. That, that is the good news. As I mentioned, the, the California governor, along with the New York governor, uh, primarily because those are the, the two states where the industry is, you know, is, is focused for, uh, in, in, uh, in shooting mostly, uh, have both said and announced uh, as, a couple of weeks ago that they're committed to reopening Hollywood. I use that term in quotes, meaning the entertainment industry. The next steps that they spoke about was, was working with the AMPTP, which is uh, the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. That's an, an organization that was tasked with trying to figure this out. So one of the things that the governor of California did was to bring in a task force, which included John Huertas, uh, who represented the actors, uh, Ava DuVernay, who represented directors and producers, Ted Sarandos of Netflix, who rep re represented producers and distributors, and try to wrap our heads around what this looks like uh, in the midst of literally a global pandemic. Some of the things that they did were um, uh, speak with and talk to uh, studio executives, epidemiologists, uh, medical professionals, health officials. Um, and, and I think one of the, the outcomes that we're gonna see is smaller, that. lower budget pictures are gonna be able to go back to work first. Um, uh, the, the, the higher, uh, you know, the two and 300 person crews is probably going to take a little bit more time. I think that's the consensus. Speaking of consensus, one of the big questions that people are asking is, what is this going to mean money-wise? What is, how, how is this going to work? What's this going to mean to our budget? Oftentimes, independent projects, we build about 10% um, contingency into our budgets just to allow for exactly what it sounds like, some, some kind of contingency. But the consensus is, we need to allow more than that. We need to allow probably that 10% as well as another 20% on top of uh, our expected budgets for a number of things, including medical personnel, insurance. One of the things you can be sure of is that um, shorter work days is going to end up uh, equating to a longer shoot. You know, we're, we're accustomed to 12, 13 hour work days on a film set. And they're talking now about shortening that to 10, uh, 10 hours, inevitably, uh, a 10 hour work day, you have to make up for it somewhere. You know, we're, as we build out our day out of days and build out our budgets, particularly where we are right now in pre-production, all of those things start to matter. So you're gonna have to, uh, as, my, as my grandmother used to say, you're gonna have to cut the top of the blanket off and sew it onto the bottom of the bed sheet, right? You know, we're, we're gonna have to make that up somewhere. Um, speaking of what you, can, uh, what you can expect, you know, when we do actually get to go back to work, and, and we physically are able to walk in, onto a set um, in the coming months. Um, testing, uh, for sure. They're talking about uh, every member of the casting crew is to be tested. And by the way, this is just this has been signed off on by the AMPTP, SAG, after a DGA, and the MPA have signed all signed off on this. Um, okay. Testing, um, uh, uh, temperature checks when you get to set, uh, possibly periodic temperature checks throughout the day. Um, staggered meal times. This is going to be new for us, especially if we're, as you know, we're building out pre-production right now and, and production is going forward. One of the thoughts is to have a staggered meal time. You know, uh, typically six hours into a work day, everybody breaks, everybody goes to the honey wagon, everybody gathers around the craft services table. Let me pause there for a second to say that it's highly likely we will no longer, we'll never see the craft services table again. 
that's probably uh, that's probably gone away, and, and that would only make sense in the midst of a global pandemic, right? None of us hovering around a, a trough of food and, and sticking our hands in the M&Ms where somebody else was. Really wrap meals, um, liability waivers are a big deal, of course. Everybody's trying to wrap their heads around this one. Um, every member of the casting crew will have to sign a liability waiver at some uh, in some fashion. Um, they're talking about um, what it looks like for actors, uh, and again, this is all fresh, but they're saying that actors most likely will not wear PPE. PPE. That only makes sense that actors will not have to, but at some point, whether it is at the beginning of a production coming up or at some point during production, uh, a director is going to say to a pair of actors, you need to walk over there and stand next to that person, or you need to go kiss that person. Now, the ultimate question is, who, whose liability is that? What does that look like? So liability waivers um, are, are a must. Uh, that's that's going to be in full effect for sure. Smaller crews. Um, I, I saw a, a message from one director who said that he cut his crew by 40%. Uh, it was a production that's taking place overseas right now. Smaller crews, face masks, um, closed sets. You know, typically you'll you'll tell your second or your second second when you have a visitor coming to set. That's going to go away at least for a period. Uh, so no visitors on set. Uh, around the world, not just in this country, but around the world, people are doing things a little differently. And just to highlight a couple of those, um, in the Czech Republic right now, you have to have a, a negative COVID-19 test before you're cleared to work, all cast and crew members. They have to have another um, test 72 hours later. In the country of France, 50 people maximum are allowed on a film or television set. Um, uh, right now in Poland, they're doing mandatory 14-day pre-production quarantines. So it's quite possible we'll see something like that in this country as well. A little trickier, of course, uh, I know I heard of one production recently that is moving to Arizona, and they, they mandated that all of their, their entire cast and crew actually took over one hotel, and as they wait for the green light from the unions, they're just standing by and everybody is uh, that makes sense. agreeing to self-quarantine. Um, you've probably seen the trades in the last couple of, uh, the last week or so. Um, some productions are going back in Georgia. The Tyler Perry Studios, uh, he, he self-describes it as a, a military-like procedure. And, I, and their uh, studio, of course, is on, uh, their, their current back lot is on an old military set. So I think it would only make sense that they have military-like procedures. But just to walk through some of that a little bit as to what they're doing and, and what we might see coming up in the future, as you pull up to the the set, uh, pull up to the lot rather, um, your car is valeted. Somebody takes that car and goes and parks it and they are committed to cleaning and sanitizing the inside of that car. Cast and crew members walk inside the studio and they're, they put their um, belongings that they brought to set on a, on a conveyor belt, think uh, airport, TSA, security type things. And uh, it's screened and sanitized and then they go to their respective rooms. Uh, they uh, uh, will be tested, and from there, uh, about four hours later, they will have a, a meal time with the entire group. Um, somebody mentioned that they had a 56,000 square foot soundstage, and people are just kind of relegated to certain parts of the, the soundstage. Nobody's getting within six, six to ten feet of each other. And then eventually, they start their work day. Um, so, you know, things are going to look different. I think the days of, of showing up to set and high-fiving various members of the uh, of the departments, you know, and then and then uh, getting to work are over. It's quite probable that we'll all be relegated to our own individual areas. I heard of one um, uh, film production overseas that is looking at various things, including either color-coded lanyards or color-coded armbands. For example, the camera department was all wearing blue armbands. The makeup department were wearing red armbands. So each of the departments on the film set were. Uh, you know, we're kind of sticking to themselves and, and relegated to staying amongst themselves and committing to that for the entire shoot. Uh, in places like Sweden, they're doing voluntary testing uh, in the weeks leading up to production. So, so self-quarantining and kind of self-regulating that. We all uh, sort of half-jokingly compare making a film to being in a foxhole, right? You know, we're all, <laughs> you're, we're all in it together. And, I, and arguably now more than ever, uh, I think once we finish a film, we will have said we've been through it. I was just going to add just, just the two big takeaways I would say, Jacqueline, in addition to what I'll, I'll post just in a little bit and let you post on the South Coast Alliance website is certainly check with state, regional, um, and municipality protocols. That's biggies. You know, everybody kind of has their own idea uh, in terms of geography about how they're doing it, when they're rolling things out, and when the actual green light comes. And then, of course, make sure to check with your unions to make sure you are, uh, you're in compliance with your own union. Great.